Tonight, Fox 4 finding the state has been stripping thousands of Floridians of their right to own a gun after declaring them a danger to the public. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Patrick Nolan. And I'm Jane Monreal. For your coroner's investigator, Katie Legrone found cops, teachers, even some who aren't old enough to drive a car banned from buying guns. Units. It was this scene at Parkland Shot fired at someone Douglas High School. that inspired the state's new red flag law. 18 months later, Florida courts have temporarily stripped gun rights from more than 2,500 Floridians. It prevents them from possessing a gun, from owning a gun, from buying a gun. People police say pose so much of a danger, they've asked the court to hit them with a year-long gun-free cooling off period. It's something we've wanted and needed for a very long time. We found a 91 year old who claimed he wanted to even the score with his late wife's alleged lover, a former Marine turned teacher who admitted telling students how he could be the best school shooter. Even law enforcement officers have lost their gun rights under Florida's new gun law. Law enforcement in every county has used this new law, some more than others. But according to state records, one county really stands out. Here, Polk County, where more than 400 of these cases have been filed in the last year and a half, the most of any county statewide. Do you own any weapons? No. The caseload so heavy, hearings like these now held four out of five days a week, and many of them. Have you had an opportunity to talk to your mother about this consent? Involve kids who legally can't buy a gun anyway. Did you read it? Or did someone read it to you? After this 15 year old made a threat during a fight at school, the judge ordered him gun free for a year. You can't just say the word shoot, but he doesn't even have a gun. He doesn't have BB guns. He, we don't have nothing. Others punished for just a prank. Do you have any firearms? These 14 year old friends who were not identifying because of their age are also facing criminal charges. After police say one of them found a note in class that said school shooting, then in a dare, they put it in a mailbox while walking home. That mailbox belonged to a teacher. None of them had ever faced a judge before. Good. Our investigation found across the state the new law is being used against kids. And in Polk County, some are as young as eight years old. Like one boy who got mad at school and said he wanted to get a gun and shoot everybody up. He was Baker acted and the petition to ban him from guns for a year was denied. I think it all boils down to the aggressive nature of our sheriff's office. Do you think that the sheriff's office is a little too overzealous with these? I, I, no, I don't. Here's a message for the hotheads. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd has gone viral for his no-nonsense, tell-it-like-it-is crime-fighting style. What's the point of filing these against kids? Well, the purpose of that is first to put the parents on notice that you've got to do a really good job at securing your firearms. Number two, it's putting the parents on notice about your kid's got an issue here. It's more of an act to warn the parents. Both. Are you surprised to learn that more than 20% of the RPOs issued in your county are for juveniles? No, not at all. Yeah, that's insane. More than 20%. That's, that's an absolutely astronomical number. Orlando defense attorney Kendra Paris says the crackdown on children makes no sense and could cause long-term damage. Even in other Florida counties where we found kids made up less than 5% of cases. And we don't know if this is going to impact their ability to apply to higher education facilities. We just don't know at this point, it's too new. But I can tell you that there are a lot of places that would look twice at a child who has been labeled dangerous by the state of Florida. A concern even these judges share. It is difficult to think that this might follow them forever. But on the other hand, we also see a lot of young people involved in these kind of mass shootings and um, we have to balance it. At a time when words matter and age doesn't. You know and I know 99.9% .9 of them are, are kids making stupid kid-like statements. But can you tell me which one means it? These orders are public record in many counties, so even cases involving juveniles are accessible to anyone. A state senator who voted in favor of this law called our findings shocking. Find out why tomorrow on Fox 4 after the game. Katie Legrone, Fox 4 in your corner. That seems to be a shocking number.
A state senator responding to a foreign nuclear corner investigation that found kids as young as eight years old are being impacted by Florida's new red flag law. He's calling for a full review of the new law now and accusing a Florida sheriff of actually abusing it. Four in your corners, Katie Legrone was the first to expose this issue yesterday. Now she's getting other lawmakers reactions tonight. It's Florida's new gun law aimed at protecting the public from future mass shooters. But a Fox 4 investigation discovered the crackdown has included at least 100 Florida children, one as young as eight years old. I would be shocked by that. Florida Senator Jeff Brandis supported the law, but never expected children so young to be impacted. I don't understand how an eight-year-old could have legal custody or control of a firearm. The year-and-a-half-year-old law swiftly passed after the Parkland shooting that lets police petition a court to temporarily ban people deemed a danger to themselves or others from buying or possessing a gun. Do you own any weapons? But after reviewing hundreds of court filings, we found many are kids who aren't legally allowed to purchase a gun anyway. Did you read it? Or did someone read it to you? In Polk County, more than 20% of the county's 400 red flag cases were filed against children, including an eight year old who got mad at school, then threatened to get a gun and shoot everybody up. And these 14 year olds never in trouble with the law before, but are now also facing criminal charges after they found a threatening note at school, then placed it in a neighborhood mailbox in a dare. They earned it and they got it. Polk County's outspoken Sheriff Grady Judd defends his department's use of the new law against kids. We've educated the kids over and over and over and over and told them words matter. If you threaten, we're taking every threat serious because we don't know who's going to shoot up the school. It seems like these children are getting caught up on other issues because of a policy that may be misapplied. Senator Brandis also concerned these cases against children, which in many counties are public record, will follow them. It could haunt somebody like a scarlet letter the rest of their life. And is that fair? I don't think it's fair. I mean, I think at the end of the day, to start to apply with juveniles who clearly have no care, control, or custody of a firearm, don't own one, have never had one in their home, have made, some of them probably have never picked up one, it seems to be um, uh, that this could be public seems to be an overstep. Polk County Sheriff tells us he would also support keeping juvenile records confidential. One of the reasons the law is applied to minors, if a child is banned from guns but is found in possession of one, they could face a felony, not just a misdemeanor. Katie LeGrone, Fox 4, in your corner. Since the Parkland shooting, primary concern is the safety of the students. Student threats against schools have led to press conferences. There's going to be zero tolerance. And headlines. Two kids are facing some serious consequences. But we found far more frequent are the threats you don't hear about. Do you regret making that comment? But land kids in Florida courtrooms like this one. Anytime they hear this at school, they're going to react to it. Thank you for being here, sir. This one. I'm concerned with this obsession and fascination you have with guns. And this one. Do you have any firearms? In fact, the number of cases involving kids who threaten to shoot and kill has taken even the most seasoned judges off guard. The cases that come before us will shock you. According to the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice, last year 779 kids were criminally charged with school threat related offenses, a nearly 25% increase from three years earlier. Using court documents filed under Florida's red flag law, we found kids threatening to shoot and kill other students, teachers, and schools. One 14 year old Pinellas boy asked a friend while on school grounds after hours, who should I start killing first? The blacks, the whites, or the Hispanics. The boy was also Baker acted. In St. Lucie County, police said a student was overheard telling a classmate he had a list of students he wanted to kill. If you want to live, don't come to school next week. The 14 year old claimed he was only joking. He also didn't have a gun. In the end, in most student threat cases we reviewed, police determined there were no guns. The sheriff's department has already told me that you have no firearms. Same with these 14-year-old Central Florida students who this summer were arrested and charged after daring each other to put a school shooting note they found in a neighbor's mailbox. Have you ever possessed a gun? And this 17-year-old who appeared in court a few weeks ago after his teacher said he was flipping the bird in front of a mirror. When she told him to stop, he allegedly said, I'll fill your body with bullets. Did you think for a second this might get me in trouble? The student claimed he was singing a song. His mom, who we're not identifying to protect her son, agrees with the punishment, a 
a 12-month gun ban. That's a good thing. I'm not mad. You gotta follow the rules. Across the state, judges aren't taking any chances. There's zero tolerance. These threats have to be taken seriously. Zero tolerance does not prevent shootings. Dr. Dewey Cornell, a forensic clinical psychologist and education professor at the University of Virginia, argues zero tolerance policies don't work for kids. There's a lot of concern in the threat assessment community that zero tolerance can actually escalate a problem, escalate a conflict. Instead, Dr. Cornell, whose own threat assessment guidelines are now being used by thousands of schools across at least 30 states, including right here in Florida, advises schools and police respond to kids who make threats less with court action and more with counseling. In a very small number of cases, less than 1% of cases, do we need to arrest and take legal action against children for making threats? But in a state is still raw from its deadliest school shooting in recent history, decoding if a student's threat is real remains a challenge we're all still figuring out. We've got kids that want to try to emulate a mass shooter. You know, what are we supposed to do with that? And then you go and they find out they don't have a firearm. But what if they did? The Florida Sheriff's Association now pushing for a bill that would make any spoken school threat by a student a crime. Katie Legrone, Fox 4, in your corner.